Hey everyone, I'm Wingman from Squadron Studio, and welcome back to our series on how to make a table UI that looks, that looks a little bit like this in the Godot engine. We've got column and row highlighting and sortable columns. This is part two of our series, so let's dive in. Where we left off last time, we made a data frame class to hold our data, our data and our column headers, as well as some uh, utility functions for getting data and manipulating the data in the data frame. We created a main script to calculate some extra columns for a uh, sports team standings table here. The next thing is going to be to finally start displaying this data to our main scene. So let's go over here to our new scene button and create a control node. We're going to call it table. This is going to be our table scene. Um, so our table can be reusable with all sorts of data. We're not just going to hard code it once. Um, and then we're going to, then a, what a table is, is just a list of rows. So we're going to next add a VBox container and call that our rows. Uh, for this, we're going to want to go up to our anchors here and click the, click the full rectangle. So it takes up the entire space of the table. Uh, save that as just table.tscn hop over back over to main and inside our panel that we let's call that background because that's what it's going to be it's going to be our table background and instantiate a table scene underneath that now we've got our table here so now we're going to make another new scene uh, let's go back over here this is going to be an hbox container and we're going to call it table row because these are going to be the rows of our tables save that scene uh, and again, set to full rect anchors, but more importantly, we're going to need to use these size flags here because these table rows are going to be a child of our VBox, VBox container here. So its arrangement is going to be determined by these. And we're going to want to click fill here uh, as well as expand. And that'll just make it take as much space as it can inside the box container. So inside our rows box container. Let's instantiate a couple of table rows. You can use control D to duplicate. And now we can see we've got four rows equally dividing the space. Our rows are a bit empty though. So now we'll need to make some table cells to fill them with. These are going to be labels uh, because we're going to be dealing with text for now. So call this a table cell, save it. Uh, put some sample text in there. Uh, I, I'm going to set it to double center alignment. Uh, once again, we need to set our size flags. Uh, the anchors don't matter. I like to set it to full rect for editing, but again, it does not matter because it, what's actually going to be used to set up its size are going to be the size flags. So align with, expa with expand and hit the fill buttons to make sure we've got the uh, full fill and expand flags. You can double check that down here in layout container sizing. You want it to look like this. This is just a shortcut to edit this here. So now we go back into our table and underneath our table rows, give it a few, give each one a few cells. And so on. Now when we run, we've got, yeah, rows of cells but we want to be able to display our data that's actually real data and not just blank words. So go ahead and delete all these uh, just dummy rows and cells for now because we will be generating our rows and cells automatically in our table script. Go up here, yeah, table.gd, that's good. Uh, and the way we're gonna do that is by giving an export var data, which is going to be our data frame class that we made earlier. So now you can see over here in the inspector for our table, uh, we can embed a data frame in our table so it knows what to render. The other data we're gonna to need to store up here at the top of our script is going to be references to the table row and table cell scenes. And there's a couple ways to do this, but the easiest is probably just to say on ready var table row is equal to preload and then snag our table row scene, and then do the same thing for table cell.
and that'll uh, let us instantiate table row and table cell with code. Uh, so now that we've got our data variables, go down here and create a function called render. This is a function that can be called uh, from anywhere. We will call it from our main script later. Uh, that will render the table to the screen. So start with if data. So it's if we actually have data in the table or else there's nothing to uh, show. First say row count is equal to data dot size for r and range row count. A row is going to be a table row instantiated. And then we're going to go under rows dot add child row. Let's go ahead and test out what that does. So go over to main and let's say, so we've got this data frame we constructed in our last video. Now let's give, say table dot data is equal to this data frame. Now let's say table dot render. Hmm, it's not liking that. Um, oh, right. Table is uh, under background. Um, it's not directly under. Need to fix that path. Background slash table. If you haven't used this dollar sign notation before, that's the same thing as saying get node background slash table. So it's just a, a nice little editor shortcut for that. So run it again. Um, Oops, that's not what I wanted to check. Okay, run it. Now we can go over here, check under remote, under table, under rows. We've got one, two, three, four, five, six rows to match our one, two, three, four, five, six rows of our data. So go back, go ahead and leave that run. Go back to our data frame render function. Um, so now we need to actually fill our rows. No, that's data frame. We want table, table.render. Uh, so now that we have created our rows, say for value in data dot get row, we're going to loop through. We're going to say for uh, make a cell is equal to table cell dot instantiate. Cell dot text is equal to uh, convert value to a string because uh, we don't know what value could be, and text has to be a string, and then just add it as a child to the row. Now let's see what that does. Hey, look at that. Our table is showing up. Uh, we're going through and we're creating a row and we're filling that row with values. But before we call this good, we want to make it a little bit more visually interesting. So let's hop back over to our table cell and switch to the 2D view. Go down here to theme overrides, styles, and click this, actually you just have to say a uh, new style box flat in here to create a style box um, around our cell. If we click on it, we can go in and edit it. For example, we don't want to draw the center. We still want it, the middle to be transparent. We just want to go in and we want to say one pixel worth of borders around the outside. And now we've got little borders. So when we uh, play, we can see that we've got borders now, but we don't want it to be these kind of double borders, we want it to be touching. So that's going to be some settings in our box containers. First, um, go into our table row, theme overrides, constants, separation zero. And now you'll notice that in the horizontal rows, um, our content is directly touching each other. There's not space in between. Let's go back up to table rows. Same thing here, set separation to zero. And there we go. Now we've got uh, a more visually interesting table with lines dividing our cells. But any uh, observant watchers out there may have noticed that we're still missing one very important thing, or should I say one very important row, and that is our column headers, our team one lost total percent. So the viewer knows what these columns actually mean. So we're going to have to make one more scene. Uh, Let's go in here, and these are going to be buttons. Let's call that, we'll call these table header cell, because our, we want our headers to 
look a little different and act a little different than the rest of our uh, data cells. Let's call this header, put it in there. And once again, uh, make sure our size flags are fill and expand. So it shows in the, go ahead and save it, shows in the uh, row box container like we want. Let's go down here to theme overrides, just like we did with the, the other one. And for normal, new style box flat. Go down here again, add the borders. Uh, but for bottom border, let's make it a little thicker uh, because we want to show that it's the header and that's usually how some of those are shown. And then let's go in here and set this to partially transparent so that way it'll just make it look a little lighter but won't uh, uh, be totally washed out. Uh, so let's go ahead and just test how that looks. Let's add a table row, add a couple header cells. another row um, so yeah we've got our uh, header cells with the uh, thick line at the bottom delete these for now then go back in here to our table script into our render function and at the top before we make the rest of our rows we're gonna make a special row called calls row and that's that is going to be a table row dot instantiate or call in this time we're going to instead of looping through the row we're going to uh, get row we're going to loop through data dot columns uh, and get instantiate a cell but it's going to be a uh, we need to import our table header cell so same kind of deal table header cells equal to preload as table header cell, then instantiate that down here. Set our text to uh, calls are always going to be strings, so we can just leave them like that. And then uh, we'll have to say rows dot add child calls row, just like we did before. We can even put that uh, underneath the instantiate call just to uh, match stylistically with below. So same kind of th deal. We're just instantiating our table, he table header cells instead of our basic table cells. So let's give that a shot, see if I did it correctly. And I did not. Let me investigate. Okay, found the issue. Uh, I have to say calls row dot add. Nope, it's... Inside the loop, after creating the cell, we have to add it as a child of the row. Calls row dot add child cell, just like we did down here with those rows. So let's try again. There we go. Now we've got our columns at the top. And because they're buttons, you can mouse over them and they look a little interactive. They don't do anything yet because we haven't set that, but that's going to be what we do in our next video. We're going to give these columns. When you click them, it's going to sort the data using that sort function we made earlier. Um, so this has been part two of the series. If you're interested in seeing that part three about making those buttons interactive and adding uh, our column and row highlighters to follow the mouse, give a subscribe um, to be notified when it goes live, uh, or just drop a like and comment on this video to help me out. I'd really appreciate it. Um, in any case, I hope you had a good time. Hope you have a uh, great new year. Uh, have a good day. Bye.